Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be revisiting a few fragrances that I've purchased over about the last month or so. I do have some more recent acquisitions that I just haven't had a chance to wear much, but once I have had a chance to play around with them I'll come back and let you know my thoughts on those perfumes as well. But I did want to let you know where I'm at with some of these perfumes because as you know sometimes tastes change and certainly in the past I've had perfumes that I thought I was obsessed with and then a couple of weeks or a couple of months later I decided I didn't really care for it as much anymore as what I thought I did so I decided I would start letting you guys know kind of where I'm at with my perfumes as time goes on especially because I think some perfumes are so beautiful they deserve to be talked about more than just once um, but I have a few here that I think could have gone either way and I maybe wasn't 100% sure about them in the beginning and I do want to let you know where my thoughts are now so if you're interested in hearing how I feel about these perfumes then stay tuned and also if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on the channel we talk mostly about perfumes so if that is your thing make sure to head on down hit the subscribe button make sure your notification bell is on so you don't miss any of my uploads and feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram as well and with that out of the way let's get into today's video okay so the first one you guys is Narciso Rodriguez for her and this is the Eau de Toilette so this one I acquired probably about three weeks ago maybe and I still really really like this just as much as when I first got it and so it is a very musky kind of an ambery perfume for women there's a few floral notes in here there's African orange flower there's osmanthus there's vetiver vanilla patchouli it's kind of a deep earthy musky scent I do have it on my arm and this is a really beautiful musky fragrance and I don't know what it is Narciso Rodriguez knows how to do musk I have owned quite a few from the Narciso range to be honest you guys I really regret letting go of my Narciso Rouge a lot of people ask me if I ever regret letting go of a perfume not usually but I do regret letting go of my Narciso Rouge because that one was so sensual such a beautiful fragrance definitely the quote-unquote sexiest of the line and I probably I want to bring it back I'm not gonna lie I do want to bring that one back even though I'm trying not to expand my collection too much I do miss Narciso Rouge but going off on a tangent here Narciso just knows how to do musk and I just I don't know what it is about it I feel like it's one of those perfumes that if I was to get my partner for example to smell it he'd probably say he didn't like it but I feel like it's one that when you wear it it's pleasant and sensual and feminine and whatever it's just a really really nice perfume and I like wearing this one actually for around the house I don't usually wear perfume just to bum around the house because I feel like it's a waste to put my perfume on just to wear at home um, but I do like to wear this one around the house on days off laundry day um, in the evening I've also worn it to bed a couple of times it's a very easy reach very easy grab and go reach I don't know it just kind of works it's just like a nice everyday perfume so that is Narciso for her, the Eau de Toilette. So yes, I still do really like this one. So the next one that I recently acquired is from the Portraits Collection from Penhaligans, and this is Changing Constance. And this one you can see there's a little bit of a dent missing. Um, I have worn it a couple of times, and I still really, really like this one. And actually, I have to say, if anything, I like it better now even than I did in the beginning because it does have a little bit of a it has a couple of masculine touches to it there's a little bit of a spice in there there's a little bit of tobacco there's a couple of things that for me sometimes don't work if I get a perfume that is really spicy or really tobacco -y or really woody it can go one of two ways I'll either continue liking it or I'll very very quickly realize it's not gonna work for me and I'll get rid of it this one I still really like let me just take the lid off here I have to say I really really love the bottle I love the little cap as well I know some people don't and actually before I had this bottle I was kind of turned off from it as well because I just thought the bottles were not that attractive but actually you guys I have to say this is one of my favorite bottles in my whole collection I think it has so much character and it's so cute and I love the gold so I really like the bottle and the scent itself I still really like the scent itself. For me, this is a very like wintertime appropriate. It reminds me a lot of the holidays, like Christmas time, snow on the ground, that kind of thing. And the spiciness that's in here isn't too much for me. There's cardamom, there's pimento, but it's not, those aren't like the biggest notes. For me, I mostly get that caramel and vanilla, I think. So I get like a spicy, spicy caramel vanilla a little bit salty I really really like it and I have had Nuit Demi Min Nuit Demi Minuit Demi 
and that one is often compared to this one. And although I think Manuia Demi has better performance, I think I like this scent a little bit better because I think Manuia Demi is a little bit stronger and could lean more masculine, whereas I do think this one is a little bit more feminine. I just, you know, I like this one more and more every time I come back to it, so which I'm really happy about because this was a blind purchase and it definitely could have gone either way. The only thing I don't like about it is the performance. I've talked about that before. Um, it could have much better performance, especially for the price. I think this was like 283 Canadian dollars. I did pay full retail, didn't get a deal on this one by any means. Um, so yeah, it doesn't, it really doesn't have the greatest lasting power, especially on skin, on clothing. It's not bad, but it's still not great. Um, yeah, I spray generously and I feel like I need to reapply. Like, yeah, so this one doesn't have the greatest performance, but I do, I do still really like it, so I don't really care. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see once I use this up if I would repurchase it again. I've said before I don't think I would, but you never know, right? Scents grow on you. And anyways, I have yet to finish a bottle of perfume currently from what's in my collection because I have so many. So that is Penhaligon's Changing Constant. So cute. <laughs> So the next one is Diptyque Eau du Well. This was also a blind, I shouldn't say purchase because I didn't buy it, this one was gifted to me, but this was a blind perfume. I had never smelt it before. And this is the Eau de Toilette version. I have actually gotten a sample of the Eau de Parfum, which I meant to talk about in my last sample sniffing video and I completely forgot to include that part. Um, but this is very, very similar to the Eau de Parfum, except the Eau de Parfum is a little bit deeper and heavier and more intense, I would say. And this one's a little bit lighter and greener and maybe more, it's more of a green vanilla. It's not so much of a deep sort of ambery type of vanilla. I really think I prefer the Eau de Toilette, to be honest. So I still really, really like this one a lot. This is one of my favorite vanillas, actually. Um, I'm going to have to do an updated vanilla perfume video, but one thing I love about it is the bottle. I've always wanted a Diptyque fragrance in my collection, and I still want to experience more Diptyque fragrances and see if there's anything else I might want to bring in. And the notes that you have in here are bourbon vanilla, LME resin, cardamom, juniper, pink pepper, Pepper, olibanum, black tea, ambergris, bergamot, saffron, and musk. But what you mostly get from this is just kind of a green, foresty, pencil shaving-y type of vanilla. Picture pencil shavings in a forest when you're surrounded by um, like pine trees and like a Canadian forest, <laughs> um, and then a whole bunch of vanilla. It's really, really beautiful. I'm just gonna take the lid off here. Yeah, I just love this. This is honestly one of the prettiest vanillas I've ever smelled. And on my skin, it actually turns into this beautiful, this beautiful kind of sweet vanilla. I just love it. Um, yeah, it's very easy to wear. This is also a very easy grab and go. It's not challenging. It's not difficult. It's just like an easy everyday kind of a fall perfume, I would say. But I think you could wear it any time of year, really. But I really, really, really like this one. So this is Diptyque Eau de Well Eau de Toilette. Still loving it just as much as when I first got it. So the next one is from Parfum de Marly, and this is their newest release in the women's collection, and this is Oriana. You guys, I love this perfume. This was blind. I paid full price. I didn't even think about it, actually. I remember I was sitting on vacation, and I was sitting there having a glass of wine or coffee, or I can't even remember, and I saw that it was available, and I immediately placed an order. I didn't even blink. I just, as soon as I saw the notes that were in here and the color of the bottle, I just bought it, and I didn't even think twice, and I had a pretty Pretty good idea. I was going to love it, and I do. I love it, you guys. How can Parfum de Marly come up with a women's fragrance that has marshmallow and it not be good? Like, how can... That's just not possible, I don't think. You guys, this perfume, unfortunately, gets a lot of flack. It... I've seen... I've seen a kind of a mixed bag of reviews. I would say it's split about 70-30. 70% of people think this is 100% worth the money and they like it. And I would say 30% of people are saying it's not worth it and it's nothing special. I think the issue is that everybody is expecting the next best thing. They're expecting something groundbreaking. They're expecting something better than Delina, better than, you know, Safanade and Darcy. And this is not really groundbreaking. It's not really groundbreaking. It's not totally unique, although I don't think it smells 100% like anything else I've smelled before. 
So it does get a little bit of flack. Also, it's not a what you would call beast mode performance, but it doesn't have to be. Like that's something that I'm really trying to promote is that perfumes don't have to be beast mode in order for them to be good. This perfume, I have no problems with performance, you guys, and I don't go crazy with it. I, I do spray generously. I spray about probably five or six sprays, maybe seven or eight, but I usually do spray seven or eight perfumes with most, or sprays with most of my perfumes. So it's not like I have to go heavy on the trigger with this one. And I get compliments, you guys, and I know people can smell me and I get chased by bees. <laughs> you know, like, it's not like this is a weak perfume. This is a great perfume. I absolutely love it. It smells so sweet and so feminine, and it's a very happy, bubbly, summertime perfume. I've actually been wearing this quite a bit. I don't know if you can see. It's, it's probably pretty hard to see, but I already have a dent in this fragrance. I would say I have it probably about to there. I've already put a pretty good sized dint in here considering this is a brand new bottle and I've had it for less than a month. It's just an easy reach. It's a beautiful, sweet, marshmallowy whipped cream, easy reach. I feel feminine, like ultra, ultra feminine when I wear this. Obviously the color of the bottle is perfect for this fragrance and when I wear this I feel super feminine, super flirty, super girly. Not in an immature way though. I would say this is good for all ages. Just a very happy, bubbly, marshmallowy whipped cream orange fragrance. I think there's orange blossom in here too as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, I just, you guys, I just love this. I don't understand why people are giving it such a hard time. Like, I think I, I think I know why, like, I think I get it, but I just love it. So yeah, this is, and, and of all of the Parfum de Marly, honestly, this is probably one of the safest blind purchases. I think I can honestly say that because I think this is one of the most mass pleasing perfumes that they have. I'm not saying you should go out and blind buy it, but if you're considering something like Italia or Athalia, however you say it, or Delina, which is not a beginner friendly fragrance, it's challenging for a lot of people. A lot of people don't like Delina. I didn't even like Delina until, you know, a year after I'd smelt it. I, I wasn't ready for it. Now I love it. I think this is one of the best, one of the best ones, one of the most mass pleasing ones as well. And um, a lot of people compare this to Killing and Love Don't Be Shy. I don't think it smells that similar to Love Don't Be Shy. I find it quite different. It does have a couple of similarities, but it's definitely not similar. I've smelled other perfumes that are way, way closer to Love Don't Be Shy. I just, you know, I feel bad for poor Oriana. I think she, I think she really gets, she's really been given a hard time and no one's been very welcoming to her. No, I'm just kidding. Now that I've talked about it forever, Oriana from Parfum de Marly, still really, really enjoying this one. So the next one that is a relatively new acquisition is a Trap Rev from Louis Vuitton. And this one, I told you guys that I felt like I kind of settled for this one because I was actually on vacation at the time and I really had my heart set on buying a bottle of Contremois, which was out of stock. So I kind of quote unquote settled for this one. When I smelt it in the store, it did hit me differently than it had before. I was actually really impressed. I really liked it. I thought it smelled really beautiful and very feminine and I really wanted to buy a perfume that day. I did not want to walk out of the store without a Louis Vuitton fragrance, so I bought this one. So initially when I got home, I was a little bit disappointed. I felt like I had settled for this one and I was kind of bummed out about it. But I have to tell you, you guys, this perfume has actually grown on me. I really like this. So this is a lychee, ginger, bergamot, peony, cacao, Turkish rose, and patchouli fragrance. So let me just take the cap off here and give it a smell does have one of the most beautiful bottles I've ever seen. A really nice magnetized cap. I always have to show off the cap because it's just so pretty. And this fragrance, honestly, you guys, this has grown on me so much. I really, really, really like this. This is a really nice kind of a flirty, fruity, kind of fresh floral fragrance. It's very girly and it's very classic because of that peony and that rose. And it does have a little bit of freshness, but it's got this juicy lychee in here as well. And lychee is kind of a tart, a tart, sweet, pink, fresh note. The same thing as what's in Delina, that kind of tart, fresh sweetness. Or if you've ever smelt um, Very Good Girl from Carolina Herrera, that also has lychee in the opening. I really, 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 you know, this is one that the more I smell it, the more I like it. It's growing on me so much and it's very feminine. And again, it's a very easy one. It doesn't challenge me. I think this is gonna be honestly 
one of my most worn come spring summer. I think it's going to be a really good spring summer perfume. I just I just really really like this one. So anyways, enough about that. A trap rev has grown on me. I actually like it even more today than when I first smelt it in the store. So yeah, happy with that one. And the last fragrance that we will visit today is a blue turquoise from Armani Privé. So I really wanted to come back and let you know how I feel about blue turquoise. And I still love this fragrance. I love it. This, I have said, is probably one of my best purchases of all time, if not my best. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the best perfume in my collection, but it's up there. And it probably is one of the best quality in fact, this could be the best quality perfume in my collection. This thing has such incredible performance. It is so strong, so long lasting. It changes so much from beginning to end. It's definitely not a linear fragrance. It changes a lot from when you first spray it to the dry down. It's a very beautifully blended and unique and pretty salty vanilla fragrance. So you have salt, you have a little bit of incense and black pepper, which I don't really get too sharply. I don't find I don't find it to be like a bothering type of an incense or black pepper, which I was kind of worried about. There's also a little bit of ylang ylang, there's cypriol oil and jasmine. So there is this kind of almost tropical beachy floral facet to it. With that cypriol oil as well, it almost makes you feel like you are either near a forest or some trees or in a forest or some trees. So it does have that sort of, it just has this kind of green component to it. And it has like a spa-like vibe. And then you do also have vanilla, moss, and sandalwood. So this is primarily for me a salty, woody vanilla, but the woodiness is not off-putting, masculine. Um, very, very rarely do I see somebody try this perfume and say they don't like it. A lot of people have blind purchased this because of me. Most people write me and tell me, oh my gosh, I blind bought this because of you and I'm in love with it. Thank you so much. Very rarely does anybody write or comment and say, you know, I got it and I'm disappointed. It has happened the odd time, but you shouldn't blind buy. I mean, I like to blind buy because I like to blind buy. I just do. I also don't live close to any stores where I can get samples. So I either have to make orders or buy them or call and ask around or it's very, very rare that I get to actually go and smell these perfumes in person, you guys. So that's why I do a lot of blind buying, but please don't. If you live close to a Saks, a Nordstrom, a Neiman Marcus, the Bay, Holt Renfrew, go smell them. Please don't blind buy them. But for me, this turned out to be such an incredible blind buy. And I'm just gonna take the cap off here. Oh, you guys, this is such a beautiful perfume. This is one of the most beautiful perfumes I've ever smelled. And it has such a sensuality to it. Like there is something about this perfume that is so sexy and I can't put my finger on it. It's almost like if you, it's very feminine and it's it's like the epitome of a woman, an expensive woman at a spa, but also, I don't know, I don't know you guys, I don't even know how to describe it, it's just beautiful. And this is the only one from the Armani Privé collection that has stayed in my collection. I did blind buy both the Vert Malachite and the Rouge Malachite. Both of those ended up going because Vert Malachite was a very heavy white floral. It was a tuberose, I think, possibly gardenia jasmine kind of thing. And I found out the hard way that I can't do a lot of those type of florals. So that one did not stay even though it was gorgeous. And Rouge Malachite also left because it was a little too herbaceous for me. And I think again had tuberose. So that one did not work out for me. This one, you guys, this is my perfect, my perfect Armani Privé. Yeah, this is just beautiful perfume. And what do I wear this for? I like this for intimate occasions. I like it for, um, you could wear this also, I think, on holiday. Like if I'm going to spend a day with my partner and we're going, I don't know, we're going to be staying in a hotel maybe, we're going to be maybe doing some swimming or hot tubbing or something, shopping, dinner, and spending the evening together, that is probably when I would wear this one. It, it just has this beautiful, super sensual um, quality about it that I can't describe. It makes me feel incredible. It makes me feel very posh, very bougie, very, very relaxed at the same time, very feminine, just a beautiful, beautiful scent that I can't put into words. And I think that is the best kind of perfumes when you love them that much and you can't put them into words. That's a good perfume. So this is Armani Privé Blue Turquoise. 
still head over heels in love with this one. All right, so you guys, out of these six fragrances, let me just tell you which ones I think I'm probably most head over heels for, although you could probably figure it out. I think I'm probably most head over heels for the Blue Turquoise, the Oriana, the Attrap Rev. I wouldn't say I'm as head over heels for Attrap Rev as I am Blue Turquoise. Um, and then probably Eau Duel from Diptyque. And then Changing Constance and Narcissa for her are probably my least liked, although I still really like them. Um, but yeah, those are kind of my top my top favorites. And so yeah, I'm still loving all of these perfumes. And let me know if you enjoyed this style of video. I will do another video in the future revisiting some of my more recent purchases that I haven't had a chance to wear yet and tell you what my thoughts are about those ones. And that's it for today. So that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these perfumes and I would love to know your thoughts on them down below in the comments. And I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye for now. And now there's something in the air and a sparkly shimmer on our skin.